doesn't take a rocket science doesn't take a genius to figure out that there's a bit of an agenda behind a lot of these publications that are being implemented into the academia as a means to crap down and so-called prejudice and hate. As I don't see any mention to communism and the travesties that have been created at the hands of communist dictators and communist regimes, but yet there's a hell of a lot of talk about so-called Nazis in the modern day. The education park was tailored by the government to the requirements of the Curriculum for Excellence ensuring that students understand the importance of building stronger communities and cherishing differences rather than divisions that can lead to hatred and conflict. Helmet Head saying it was an immense privilege to visit Bosnia and I'm not going to say that in the summer and met with survivors and the bereaved of the 1995 genocide. I learned firsthand how they fought to preserve the memory of their loved ones. Here in Scotland we're determined that our young people learn to shape their future through awareness of the lessons from the past including from such events as the, the I'm not going to pronounce that. Genocide. The education park is vital to help our children and young people understand and learn from the genocide. By learning and reflecting of the horrors of that genocide will play an important part in creating a better future and a more tolerant society. Revamp. It's a bit of a one-sided version of events that you're presenting to the children as a means to eradicate so-called bigotry and hatred. Is it not? No mention of this Muslim military commander who was responsible for killing over 3,000 Christians a year or two prior to the genocide in question and subsequently was jailed for two years and only served six months. But yet, it's to talk about the Muslim instigators in this time period while we highlight the Muslim victims brings more questions and answers if you ask me. Doug Dale was reported as saying, as Scotland strives to become a more tolerant nation, it's important to remember the horrors that can emerge when we stop seeing each other as friends, families and neighbours. Willie Rennie, also clear on the importance of this resource, saying, with right-wing sentiments increasing across Europe, it's more important than ever to raise awareness of the potential for ethnic tensions to escalate to violence. <laughs> Didn't take too long for the mask to slip. So here we have a bunch of communists in sheep's clothing. Heavily in favour of implementations for the curriculum to dissect genocide and fascism and so on and attribute modern day anti-immigration sentiment to that of the Nazis from the 1930s and so on without mentioning a damn thing about communism, without mentioning a damn thing about the other people that were involved in the genocide in Bosnia. And not only that, if you were genuinely sincere about teaching children about these historic events and the wrongs and the rights and what led to these events, then you would be giving them the full picture. Not to mention, of course, talking about communism as is equally as abhorrent as Nazism. Not to mention that they're not entirely dissimilar. Anyhow, it then leads to yet another publication that's been implemented by the Educational Institute of Scotland for schools to undertake. Not entirely sure where the age bracket is for this one, but you can bet your bottom dollar it's rather young. Always the same. In response to the increasing hostility and prejudice towards Muslims and Islam, it's more important than ever for staff and students within the educational establishment to understand what Islam is and how to prevent and challenge attitudes and behaviours towards Muslim in a prejudicial manner. Goes on to say, Muslim prejudice can be described as a dislike or a prejudice against Islam or Muslim, especially as a political force. However, this does not quite go far enough in explaining what this prejudice is as Muslims and BEME people experience it day to day life. What have black people got to do with Muslims? Why are you lumping black people in with Muslims here? Schools and colleges should not assume that because they appear to be ethnically homogenous or apparently have staff or learners from a limited range of faith backgrounds that this topic is not relevant. Nonetheless. Learners and staff may not always disclose their faith, particularly if they fear negative consequences. Learners and staff from other world religions or those who have no religion can experience hostility and prejudice from people who believe them to be Muslim. People who practice Sikhism are particularly likely to encounter prejudice based on assumptions that they are Muslim. <laughs> All staff and learners may be exposed to anti-Muslim prejudice through the media or in their communities. Any establishment could at some point encounter a pupil, a visitor or a staff member who's Muslim. This could include schools taking part in foreign exchange students and so on. A further driver for engaging with this issue is the emphasis that GTCS standards for registration on themes of equality and social justice. Social fucking justice. What relevancy does this have to academia? I don't understand what they're trying to what relevancy does social justice and valuing diversity have to do with academia? Key professional standards actions relevant to challenging racism and anti-Muslim prejudice. 
Embracing locally and globally the educational and social values of sustainability, here we go again, equality and justice and recognizing the rights and responsibilities of future as well as current generations. Why don't they apply this same metric to their own countries where they come from? How about the Christians and the Jews that get treated like utter dog shit in their countries, hmm? If they're not killed, then at the very least they're in hiding for the most part or they're paying staunch taxes for being Christian or whatever it may be. But yet they come over here or they get activists on their behalf making all these demands and proclaiming that society needs to operate the way that they see it in order for all to be equal and for social justice to be truly reached. It's an absolute joke. I've got no particular issue with Muslims per se, but see these activists who preach to the choir about diversity and inclusion, they really don't do these people any favors, if I'm honest, you know? I go through all these pandering activists for the most part. A rise in the prominence of fascist and white supremacist movements. What you mean everybody being deemed far right even though they're not far right? You mean those so-called white supremacist movements? Yeah, all right, okay. Hostile narratives about immigration and asylum issues. You mean the African men en masse on boats pretending to be asylum seekers when they're really not as a means to come over here as an economic migrant? Yeah, okay. Hostile media com comment about Islam. I mean, what are they talking about? The majority, about 70%, if not 80% of the media doesn't even utter a damn negative thing about Islam or Muslims. They can't even bring themselves to criticize the Muslims in Birmingham for having an issue with the LGBT emphasis in the T compulsory education. You know, somewhat silent in that regard. But if it was white men, you'd have something to say about it then, wouldn't you? This, this is the problem here. You go have to talk about the so-called rise in fascism and white supremacy, claiming the far right's on the rise, claiming that it's all due to racism and anti-immigrant sentiment, when you can't even understand that you People like you, the media in general, and the pandering politicians all play an integral role in sowing the division that seems to be linked to the surface at this point in a lot of places across Europe. The consistent amount of double standards and pandering. Scotland gains many benefits from being a culturally and ethnically diverse society. We were 4% non-white in 2011. That doesn't mean that people that are not white aren't welcome in Scotland, but it does mean that rewriting history to pretend that we've always benefited from such cultural and ethnic diversity is a lie. Things might be changing now, for better or for worse, but to pretend that our history is identical to our present is just nonsensical and it's an outright lie. Anti-Muslim prejudice can be described as a dislike or a prejudice against Islam or Muslim, especially as a political force. However, this does not quite go far enough in explaining what this prejudice is as Muslims and BEME people experience it day to day life. What have black people with Muslims? Why are you lumping black people in with Muslims here? I want to consider the lived experience- Oh fucking here we go, the lived experience. <clears throat> Tackling Islamophobia and involving a diverse group included many people of Muslim faith discussing the words that come to mind when teachers, educators and students consider defining Islamophobia. Several reoccurring themes emerged including fear, ignorance and prejudice, a form of hatred that serves a politicised purpose, an undervaluing of people's basic humanity, <laughs> prejudice rooted in institutional structures and linked to institutional behaviours, well, such as white supremacy I, I presume, something experienced through physical attacks as well as through othering and segregation. <laughs> Members may therefore find it useful to define anti-Muslim prejudice more expansively as they make fear of hostility towards or prejudice against the religion of Islam or its followers, or people who are perceived to be Muslim based on stereotypes and institutional inequalities. What the fuck are you talking about now? It's one of many publications that have been implemented into the academia as of late. There's a hell of a lot more than I gave them credit for, has to be said. Not entirely sure what the relevancy is for them all, if I'm honest, considering when I was in school, never needed to be taught any of these things, and I grew up just fine. Never got taught to dislike or see people in contempt if they weren't like me. Never had an issue with anybody from a different faith background or ethnicity or so on. But yet now we're expected to believe that until these publications are officially implemented, society will continue down this path of rampant misogyny, rampant transphobia, etc, etc, and even rampant Islamophobia. Issues that were never a thing five, six years ago, but now all of a sudden they plague Scotland rotten.